everybody, and welcome to the Witty Banter Book Club podcast. I am Maddie, here with... Courtney, hello, and today we are going to be reviewing Twisted Love by Anna Wong. So this week we read Twisted Love by Anna Wong, and I desperately wanted to like this book for two reasons. First, last week I made a joke how if I gave this book a scathing review, it wasn't going to be probably because the book was bad, but more so that Things We Never Got Over was so good, it clouded my judgment on what a good romance novel looks like because that novel is so great. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to like this one. I went into it hopeful. Mm. Did not. I did not enjoy it. And I felt guilty saying I didn't like it because I thought maybe it was because Things We Never Got Over was so good, but I actually just think this is a bad book. I also wanted to really like this book because it is all over book talk, bookstagram, booktube. It is everywhere. Everybody really, really likes this book. And so I thought, well, if so many people are talking about what a great book it is, it must be a good book. The an- No, it's not. It is, it is not a good book. And we're going to talk about this in depth because I do not understand what people like about this book. <laughs> so Twisted Love is a dual POV between two characters. The first character is Ava Chen. She is 22 years old. She's a student and she is the sunshine in this story. She is a person who is very kind to others. She's uh, very like almost naive to the world. Even though she's experienced some trauma in her own life, she is very forgiving of the world and likes to see the world as like a beautiful place. Now, to counter that, she has a guy in her life who is her brother's best friend named Alex Volkov. And Alex is an abusive wannabe Bruce Wayne. (laughs) And... (laughs) (laughs) Okay, yeah. And and Alex is the kind of guy that is trying so desperately to be dark and mysterious and brooding and thinks very highly of himself and thinks everybody is stupid thinks the whole world is stupid and just is looking at the world like it's an ice cold place where nothing good ever happens to anyone ever and that stems from trauma that he experienced as ava's also stems from trauma that she experienced both in childhood now of course these two are you know what What basically ends up happening is that Ava's brother, Josh, who lives right next door to her very conveniently and very weird, um, lives right next door to her and he is going away on a trip for a year and he needs somebody to watch his house for a year. So Alex moves in and Josh tells Alex, like, my sister, she's a really great girl and she's really naive to the whole world. So just um, keep an eye on her and make sure nothing bad happens to her. So, of course, that forces them to be together and to have Alex kind of watching over Ava, and he's very protective, and he's very um, interested in her, and he shows that through being protective, and yeah, that's pretty much the story. And then they they obviously, you know, fall in love or whatever, because it's a romance book, but um yeah, this book is awful, and I can't <laughs> stress that enough. I literally, this is my love in the time of serial killers. This is my villain era. I'm actually going to be entering my own villain era after this book, because it's so oh bad. Gosh. When you mentioned Batman, I just thought of that audio that came out, like, with the uh, Robert Pattinson Batman, where he's like, I'm vengeance. He, Perfect. <laughs> He literally call he literally says he's looking for vengeance in this. There is a note that I wrote I wrote okay Bruce Wayne because he kept yeah. saying vengeance. This is going to be a scathing review by the way. I I'm sorry to anybody who liked this book. First of all, how? Second of all, I'm sorry. I don't honestly don't even know what to say. I would I'm going to give the categories that it falls under. Obviously it's a <laughs> romance. Uh I would say it's probably more of a dark romance. Um yeah, Maddie can agree with that one. Kind of a grumpy sunshine vibe. I wouldn't say quite enemies to lovers. More grumpy sunshine. I would err on that yeah, side. And, and um, forced proximity. Yes, very much forced proximity, obviously, with the housing situation that they had going on there. Next category is, would we recommend this to a fellow reader? If you can't tell already, no, I would not recommend this to a fellow reader. Um, I think that it is a bad book. I think that 
the themes in this book err on the side of you needing therapy if you like this book. And I just, I cannot express how much I disliked this book. Courtney, what do you think? Um, no, I don't think I would recommend it. I have had some other friends who I've been talking to about this book recently. Where they're kind of like, just keep going in the series. Like, that's the worst one out of all of them. So in that sense, like, I can't say that I wouldn't recommend the whole series. Obviously, we haven't gotten through it yet. But this book, like, just very dark. Uh, I do think there should be some, like, trigger warnings It's very reminiscent of some other romance authors who just like to, like, trauma dump and have these awful, terrible characters in their books, which is fine. But, like, that's not what I'm looking for in a romance. And it's not what most of the people who ask me for book recommendations are looking for in a romance. So I would not recommend it in the general sense. I'm glad we're on the same page with that one. (laughs) Because if you were like, I actually really liked this book and I think that I should recommend it to everybody I know, I think that I might have to break up with you. Maddie, we're never breaking up. I know. Okay, so the next one is, (laughs) would we recommend this to our sisters? I gave this a resounding fuck no. um, (laughs) Because I I would, first of all, never recommend this to even the people Mm -hmm. I don't like. Like, I would just never recommend it to anybody. I don't think that I think that the smut in this book was extremely dirty and I understand that people are into stuff like this but there were certain instances in this book certain lines that were said that made me literally say like this is borderline essay like this is not romantic in any way this is like like there's no consent to it and I would not want my sisters to read something like that. Um, I also think that Alex was a horrible love interest, and I don't think he had any redeeming qualities, and I don't think anybody, especially younger girls, should be reading books like that where they can maybe get this wrong image of how you're supposed to be treated in a relationship because Alex is not how you should be treated in a relationship, so... Yeah, I definitely don't think that behavior should be romanticized. Obviously... I'm not going to re- recommend it to my sisters either. Uh, it's very uncomfortable at a lot of points. Obviously, it does have smut, so that's initially, like, the first, okay, it's out. But, like, yeah, the themes are very violent, very dark, um, and that's just not something that I think I would want my sisters to experience. So, it's a no. it's a no for me, dog. So next, we have four pillars that we like to base all of our reviews on, and then we will average those out and give our book an overall review. It's not really like our true average. It's more how we feel average about the book. So our four pillars are the witty banter, which if you can't tell from the name of our podcast is very important to us. There is character development, there is smut, and then there is realism. So we're going to start with the witty banter. Courtney, what did you give this for witty banter? uh like a two that is a generous two their banter isn't witty it's just like concerning (laughs) honestly uh and there's no like quippy nature to it like a lot of times the female love interest the main character she is like tiptoeing around the male love interest because she doesn't want to like set him off because he's this like violent kind of crazy possessive person so their banter like there weren't parts where like I giggled or anything or like clutched my pillow and I was like oh my god like some of these other books that I'm reading like it was very concerning so I gave it a two just because like I'm too generous to give it a one I think and it's not quite as mediocre as a three So when we read Love in the Time of Serial Killers, I felt bad giving that a low rating for certain aspects of the book because I can tell that the book itself, it had good intentions. It was obviously meant to be a book that, you know, made you feel good. And even though I didn't get the reaction that I wanted out of that book, I still like, you know, acknowledged that there were parts of the book that deserved better ratings than ones. Yeah. That being said, I gave the witty banter in this book a zero. It does not <laughs> exist. There is no witty banter in this book at all. Um, in fact, there, like Courtney said, it is just 
basically him being possessive and aggressive towards her and her just sort of like taking it. There was really no no banter in this book at all. It was just conversations that made me uncomfortable to read. Um, so the next category is the character development. I also gave this a zero because I don't think either of the characters changed in any way for either good or bad. I think that they just both suck and are horrible, especially Alex. I think that he is the worst person on the planet. If there was a category for like <laughs> worst people on the planet, I would put him at number one. Okay. But he's not real. So he's a horrible fictional man. And for a fictional man written by a woman, I, or, and for a fictional man written by a woman, I'm a little concerned. So, Courtney. Yeah. Okay. So I gave it a two here too, uh, as well, because I I agree, Alex not a great person. Um, but I did think that Ava had some sort of personal development, like conquering some of her fears associated with her childhood trauma granted she planted herself in a brand new traumatic situation because of her relationship with alex but i did see some growth there um in terms of his growth i mean at the end he kind of comes groveling back i don't know if you can call that growth it's obviously regret but um yeah i gave it a two yeah i could not in good conscience give this a good review so <laughs> I don't think two is a good review. No. That's 40%. But it's better than a zero. That's true. It's better than a zero. That's true. Okay, so <laughs> the next category is smut. Now, this is the only one that I gave it a high rating. In terms of the smut in this book, it is a five in terms of it existing and, like, the content of it. In terms of it being good, I would give it a no. It's not good. But, like, it is very intense and it is prevalent throughout the entire book so it is is a five for me on that one uh, <laughs> uh but that being said i did not enjoy reading any of it but it does exist i literally wrote five but it's not good that's what i wrote next to it so yeah if we're talking about like intensity it's on the higher end of the scale i personally rated it on like what i thought of it which was also a two. Two's across the board here, guys. Um, because it was just like very, I don't know, like people are into what they're into, whatever. But it was just really like violent and impersonal. And like in my romance novels, in the smut area, I prefer, like, I don't know, these are supposed to be meaningful, loving relationships that these people are building. And so like, I mean, a lot of these, in, like, smut encounters are so, like, violent or intense. It just kind of detracts from the overall relationship. Like, I'm not coming here for that specifically. It's an element of a story about an adult relationship. And so, like, it contributes to the overall storyline in most romance novels. But this one just really detracted from, like, love and respect that are supposed to be being built between two people. So I gave it a two. But there was a lot yeah. of it. Yeah. That's why I had a hard time with it. Because I couldn't just be like, I don't like this smut, so I'm going to give it a zero. Or, like, I, that was my idea. Like, I couldn't just give it a zero because I wasn't interested in it. But, like, it happened so frequently and it was such, like, a huge part of the book. Um, I, once again, I've never read Fifty Shades of Grey, but I'm assuming this is probably very similar to that in terms of like the themes throughout it um where like it exists and some people are really into that and i'm just not that's yeah. all right yeah um and our last category which is realism <laughs> i gave it a zero because literally none of these uh, things happen in real yeah. life um yeah that's all i want to say like none of this stuff happens i well like the main plot of the book none of that stuff happens but courtney what do you what do you think yeah i think i'll give it a one and like we'll talk about more why in the spoiler section because i don't want to give it away but it, it's really unrealistic like one 
unbelievable occurrence to the next just cascading continually throughout the book and it's like people have trauma i get that terrible things happen to people every day but like yeah this is some very detached from reality type ish uh never saying i'm not saying it like could never ever ever happen but it's not likely (laughs) um yeah just a lot of crap happening that makes some but little sense yeah if you guys want to know how truly um uncomfortable uncomfortable i am talking about this book i'm giving myself alicent hightower nails oh gosh like i literally am picking at my nails because i'm just like i want to be done talking about this book it was i really just did not enjoy this and i feel bad because i know people like these books a lot and what concerns me about people liking these books is that a lot of the people who are recommending this book on TikTok are like 17 years old. Because I was going through book talk because I'm not on TikTok, but we have a TikTok for our podcast. And so I was going on there to try and find some audios to use. And there's like, oh, check out these books. And I'm like reading, I'm looking at them. And there's like this really young girl who's recommending this book. And I'm like, why are you reading this? This is horrifying. On that note, we're going to give our overall ratings now. I have a feeling I know what Maddie's is. Uh, What do you you think? I'm going to – a zero. I actually gave it a one because I overshot my (laughs) – I I wasn't sure if you would brave giving it any sort of numerical ranking after all of the categories. No, I felt like I I had to give this one a – a new like a number you know because goodreads goodreads won't let you just put zero so i put one (laughs) i gave it a two the i mean the story's bad the characters i don't like them but the writing structurally isn't like terrible i and like i don't know it still made sense like from start to finish as infuriating as a lot of things are i guess that's just comparatively to some books that i've read which just have like no structure terrible writing typos grammatical errors like she's very clearly an educated person the writer yeah Uh, so i feel i feel guilty giving books like really really low reviews um and this one is lower than love in the time of serial killers for me too uh but that being said like I do see some admirable qualities, but I just the plot was really bad and I can't support or recommend this book. So that's where I'm at. All right. So before we move on to the spoilers, I just want to read a couple of the Goodreads reviews. Oh, that, boy. Um, Is this like bad? Made me. Yeah, kind of. Okay. So after I read this book, I thought that I was maybe a little harsh because immediately after I read it, I was like, going to goodreads to go leave my review and it has like a pretty high rating on goodreads it has a let's see 3.78 which is kind of high for goodreads um romance novels usually like i see a lot that are like in like the twos um but i wanted to read some of the reviews that made me laugh this one uh it says literally WTF was this. <laughs> okay. This one says, one star. I was going to be kind and tell myself to write this book a two, but that was before he actually growled and someone <laughs> when someone else kissed Ava's cheek. <laughs> oh my god. The growling. I don't think words can express how much I hate this book. One star. Those are just three of the ones that made me laugh pretty hard when i read them because you resonate with those i resonated a lot with those Mm. my review (laughs) um i said this is what i said for my review just for context am i alone in thinking this book was awful it sure feels like it alex has absolutely no redeemable qualities and his behavior towards ava is straight up abusive what the actual fudge because i don't cuss on goodreads so very poetic yep So now we're going to move on to the spoilers. Um, 
so if you have not read this book or if you're planning on reading this book for some reason and you watch the first half of this video, I don't know why you want to read it now unless it's like a hate read. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but we have uh, quite a bit to talk about in terms of spoilers. All these little markings are things that I want to talk about. And yes, so if you haven't if you haven't read it, click off, come back when you're done. And, uh, yeah. So, Courtney, let's start with the spoilers. Do you want to start um, with the who you would cast? Or did you not come up with anybody you would cast? I actually have people I would cast for this one. And it makes me very uncomfortable. I had a hard time thinking of people to cast. I I had a hard time particularly with... I I haven't come to a resolution. And here's, here's why. Uh... I have a hard time, like, I know actors portray evil, awful people all the time, but, like, I just have a hard time finding someone that, like, fits how I picture Alex visually, who I think could also be, like, terrible enough to act that out, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's where I'm kind of caught up there. What are you, what are, what are your castings? So, my castings for this... (laughs) Sticky um, note. I'm out. So for Ava, this is by the way before I ca- I came up with these, like before they even got together in any way. So after they got okay. together, it made me very uncomfortable picturing these people. Okay, but for Ava, I was thinking of Alana Condor. Do you oh, know okay. who that is? Of course, she's the she's the girl from. All the boys I loved, which, by the way, I actually liked those movies, and I feel I did too. They were cute. <laughs> they were cute. They were like these little, like you know, teen romances. Although Noah Centiago, Centiago, Centinado is not. Anyway, he's in a he's in a he's in a Wallows music video, which is like one of my favorite artists. And every time I saw him in there, I'd be like, "What is he doing here, Noah? What are you doing here?" Um, for Alex, I was thinking of <laughs> Timothy Chalamet. He's too, like, androgynous. Like, Alex is very masculine. <laughs> sure. I Masculine? Mm, he's aggressive. He's described as, like, a big man, too. Timmy's uh, like, well, that's, but that's because Ava is so small. That's true. So I was just thinking of him, and once it got to the smutty scenes, I was very uncomfortable thinking about actors like that. Um, I only have one other person that I I would cast, and that is for Madeline, who was the, or Madeline, Madeline, I can't, I don't know which one it's supposed to be. I think it's Madeline. Um, She is, like, the evil ex-girlfriend character. Um, and I was thinking of Sabrina Carpenter. Okay. I can like, the minute that. that she was just, de- when she was described, I was like, oh, yeah, that's who I'm thinking of. Fair. So those are my castings. I know that in the future books that Bridget and her bodyguard are, I think, the next book. I'm and kind then- of intrigued by that one. I That's because you like the royalty fantasy <laughs> type stuff. That's true. Maybe he's not as bad. I don't know. And then uh, <laughs> the book after that is Josh and Jules. Mm-hmm. And then the book after that is Stella and some guy named Christian. So, okay. That is so. I didn't think about those characters because I thought that maybe I could think about them when, when, and if. We read the next books. I honestly, if we read the next books, I think I might rent them from the library because if they are as bad as this one, I don't want to, like, own them. Yeah. Even though- I have a terrible habit of buying a whole series at once, so I already own all of them. But <laughs> whether or not they're just decorations is up for debate, you know? They might yeah, never get um, cracked open. We'll see. If you're interested in us reading the next books, we won't be reading... Um, next one is Twisted Games, I think. That one we're not even scheduled to record until the end of February. So if you're interested in that one, it won't be 
for a for while. A while. Um, I, which is good because honestly, I kind of need a little break after reading <laughs> this this week. So, yeah. Um, okay. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is just like kind of a general book thing. And that is that there are no trigger warnings in this book. Um, usually what I like to see in books like this is after the cover page, I like to see something that's, you know, there's like the dedication to the people that they wrote the book to. And then sometimes there'll be trigger warnings at the beginning of books. And I think that this book absolutely needed that and it didn't have it. And so that's just kind of a criticism, I guess, of Bloom, because the publishing company, because that is something that I think that they should have absolutely had included in the beginning of this book, because there are some really heavy and dark themes in this book that if the wrong person picked this up expecting a romance book like book talk is suggesting it as um that can be really damaging for some people and so it's just kind of crazy that there was no no trigger warning it says this is what it says this is the content (laughs) warning that it has it says this book contains explicit sexual content profanity and very possessive and morally gray anti-hero and topics that may be sensitive to some readers but i think that they should have been explicit on what the book is going to be talking about domestic violence literally borderline essay like it's just there's just like a couple of lines in this book. I literally read them to my friends last night because I was like, am I just like, like, what is this? But. All right, let's get, let's get into the nitty gritty of this book. Okay. Um, so my. F- well, what's your first point? Because it might. My it first. The same one. My first. Well, I was going to go through the actual book, but if you wanted to do just general things first, we could do that too. Whatever you want to do. Well, see, I for this one, I didn't mark any specific points. I finished this literally like 30 minutes before we hopped on here to start filming just because I've had a crazy week of class and stuff. So this is very fresh for me. I want to say that like the first thing that should have set me off or did set me off was like, I understand if you're going out of the country and like you want one of your friends to like be there for your sister, right? Like, Hey, if she needs anything, can I give her your phone number type deal? But Josh is like, I need you to keep an eye on my sister because of her crazy ex. And granted her ex was crazy, but like he's asking his morally gray friend to like move in next to his sister. I was like, this is weird. Like that being protective of your sibling is fine, but like, There's lots of controlling elements in the men in this book. Josh exhibits that as well. So this whole thing where it starts off where, like, Alex is keeping an eye on her for Josh. It's very, like, I don't know. I thought it was a little dehumanizing. Like, she's a dog or something that needs to be, needs to have an eye kept on her while her freaking owner or her brother is out of town. And that was weird to me. Yeah, it was very odd. Um... I did not like that either because I think that it kind of established that uh, nobody really respects Ava as a person. She is instead just like this object. And so that's like the main theme throughout the book is that she's just seen by men as an object. Yeah. Yeah. Very sad. Um, okay. Okay. Also, if you hear snoring, it is my pug. <laughs> um, he has just started snoozing real hard, and I can hear him over my noise-canceling AirPods. So there's a very good chance you can hear him, too. So, um, Okay. So within the first 25 pages of this book, there was a lot of mentions of relations already, um, which should have been my first warning going into this is that it was going to be very explicit and that the explicitness of books doesn't bother me it's the content of the explicitness that bothers me so like the first 25 pages in i was just like oh this is gonna be real smutty um but little did i know (laughs) um so uh my next My next tab is on page 32, 
And I just, this is a, a part when um, Alex has just moved in and Ava goes over to his house and she brings cookies and she's like, here are these cookies um, I made for you. And he invites her in or whatever. And she makes a Harry Potter reference. And I wrote Harry Potter reference, cringe. <laughs> um, I love Harry Potter, by the way, but... For some reason, I just hate it whenever other people talk about Harry Potter in books. It's like, okay, I get it. I'm a firm, yeah, I'm a firm believer that like pop culture references are never done well in literature. Like, it's really hard because a lot of times when they try and do that, it becomes outdated really quickly, right? So like I'm reading a book from two years ago and they're mentioning a song that was like really prominent at the time, but I'm like, Nobody listens to that anymore. I think it really like ages the content. Um, and I don't know. I think it's it's just like a kind of half-witted attempt at like being relevant. Like the story should speak for itself. You don't need to they're just not never well done. And so I think they always detract from the story. Like anytime I'm reading a book and they're like, we were listening to Taylor Swift in the car, I'm just like, ugh. I don't know why, but, like, I always feel like they're poorly done. Yeah, I agree. I I don't like whenever I'm reading something and then it talks about Taylor Swift, Harry Potter, Star Wars, uh, things. Honestly, like, Game of Thrones. Like, these are all things that I like, um, but it's not things that I want to, like, necessarily read somebody, some fake character's opinion about. Um, the whole including, like, modern day things into books is very tricky because, as you know, Courtney, I'm writing a book right now, mm -hmm. and I am writing the scene, actually, like, I was, like, writing that last night, where my character is, like, stalking somebody on Instagram, and while I'm writing it, I'm thinking to myself, like, this is going to age the book. And so now mm -hmm. I'm going through this debate in my head whether or not I want to include her doing that in the book or if I want to have maybe some other character do it in passing and then relay the information to her. Well, here's when I think cultural references are well done, either when they're referencing something classical, right? So like if I'm reading a book and they reference something like I don't know, Beethoven or like Pride and Prejudice or like a really old classic movie. Like that doesn't age something because it's been a classic for a really long time or it's been a staple for a really long time. So I think that works. I also think it works modern, like referencing modern um, cultural things or like social media if it's vague. So like if you were to say like she got on her phone and scrolled through her um social media looking for something like i think that's vague enough to where the person gets an idea but it's not like i went through my instagram followers and did x y and z super descriptive you know starting on page 44 we start to get our first instance of alex being a controlling person this scene oh. is when ava is taking a is it pronounced boudoir boudoir yeah well oh. So she's doing a, 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 a oh, she what is it a boudoir a, a, a boudoir a bourgeois boudoir it's I think I don't know, it's, it's French. French I'm trying well yeah obviously it's I'm French some some sexy pics some saucy yeah and she's little numbers yeah so um he she's not responding to his texts and so. She is not responding to his texts and he walks in and he like is like going full Steve Harrington on Jonathan God. in Stranger Things on I mean. this poor guy who's just taking these photos. He He's like talking about how he wants to like, cut, he like throws a blanket at her and he's like cover up and nobody's seeing these pictures ever. And um, it's just like. Dude, she's not your girlfriend. She's your friend's sister, and, like, you guys don't have a relationship. That is so inappropriate. It would have been 
inappropriate either way because she's a grown ass woman well, and she's right. also a photographer. Like this is those types of photo shoots are not uncommon, especially in the art world. Uh, and like the I'm, a lot of I think you know photographers and artists learn by doing uh, by participating in art with their companions and with their classmates. So like I don't think this is super out of the norm. It that whole scene's problematic from start to finish, right? Because she like doesn't text him back. He freaks out. He buys her a new phone. Then he harasses her friend into telling him where she is. He goes there into a house of someone he doesn't know after they told him to stop. Like the dad or somebody was like, Don't go up there. And he just barges through. Uh, and then he gets really like physically aggressive taking the camera he deletes a lot of the pictures i think maybe all of them and then he's like thinking about destroying her classmate's career like very toxic very possessive very scary behavior that was something that i hated throughout the entire book was how he is the epitome of a white man who's rich and has no consequences to his actions because he's rich yeah very very every time mob boss esque yeah every time he does something or somebody does something that he doesn't agree with or he doesn't like he sits there and he says i'm gonna ruin this person's entire life and if not their life their entire family's lives and just that's just like yeah yeah like it's just it's just so messed up unhinged this guy's just taking photos Ugh, it's just so annoying i really just ugh. so (laughs) so then her friends have this little joke with her and they're like we're gonna try to get alex to feel things we're gonna have these little emotions that we want him to feel and that is a a point of the book that lasts for about 30 seconds and then they just forget about it entirely I thought it was very, like, middle school. Like, they literally, they called it Operation Emotion. I was like, are they 13? Like, they're trying to make this grown-ass scary man jealous and, like, sad. For what? Like, and I get it. Like, they're like, oh, he likes Ava. And she's like, no, he doesn't. And so she's, like, trying to prove to herself and them that that's not true. Obviously it is. But, like... It was just a very immature plot point. And you're right. They kind of just dropped it eventually and never revisited it again. Nope. I had actually expected him to, like, find out. So I actually predicted. I was like, oh, for fear she's going to get kidnapped and he's going to be like, I was so afraid I was going to lose you. Um, So I was just like, uh, that's what I was expecting to happen. But they had dropped that point of the, like, that plot so quickly that... It just was like, okay, I guess that's not what's happening. I was like, oh, they're going to break up and then she's going to get kidnapped and he's going to be like, blah, 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 blah. (laughs) That actually kind of would have been better than what actually happens. In my opinion. Kind of what happens is not with the Operation Emotion. She does get kidnapped, though. Yeah. Um, Okay. So then they're on page 70. They are talking about, or this is when she goes over to his house to, like, watch movies with him or whatever to get him to, like, feel emotions. A couple of things about this part of the book. One, um, she, like, sits on his lap and he, like, makes, like, this innuendo to her. And she's just like, oh, my God, what? I I wrote, excuse me, what? Because I I was just like, who the hell says that to somebody? It was just, like, very, like... What does that say? Gross. Gross. <laughs> gross. But let me... That, that yeah, it was gross. Um, what else is gross is that Ava falls asleep at his house. And he brings her up to his bedroom. And this is how the scene goes. <clears throat> Instead... Sorry, let me see. I almost soothed a hand over her brow before I caught myself. Instead, I changed into a pair of black sweats, flicked off the light, and climbed into the other side of the bed. A gentleman would have slept on the couch or a floor, but of all the insults people had thrown my way over the year, gentleman wasn't one of them. Yeah, no, no, 
you know? That's what that's why I wrote no gross. Death. First of all, it's weird. Okay, like it was kind of him to bring her up to the bed and, like, put her in the bed, but he should have slept on the couch or somewhere else. But instead, he sleeps in the bed next to her. For reference, men, this is creepy behavior. You yeah. Don't do this. Men, if it's you're not normal or okay. Yeah. Leon, if you're listening, this is weird. <laughs> Get your pump on, Leon. Yeah. I, I'm calling out my friend Leon because he texted me this morning saying he was listening to our podcast at the gym, so... <laughs> Leon, if you're listening. Um, okay. Something that made me laugh, though, is on page 80. You know what I mean. Josh would have murdered us, brought us back to clean up the mess, and then murdered us again. Not that I want to sleep with you either way. Liar. An annoying voice in my head whispered. I shoved it aside. You're not my type. Alex's eyes narrowed. No. Then who, pray tell, is your type? It was too early for this. Um, I scrambled to think of a safe answer. Ian Sommer handle handler? Ian Sommer handler? Damon Salvatore from the Vampire Diaries? Ian Summer Halder. So Summer Halder? Yeah. I thought what? I thought she had misspelled it in the book and you were trying to read it. Yeah, it's Summer no, Halder. No, I just don't know how to read. That's my can, issue. Can I just say okay. real quick too, sorry. When he said pray tell, I don't know why, but like I'm just imagining those terrible, awful men with fedoras. Like, pray, pray tell. The lady. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> okay. So, oh, this is the part where I said, let me guess. She's going to get kidnapped. He's going to save her and be like, I was scared to lose you. I was wrong. That's not what happens. But... <laughs> she doesn't get kidnapped. Better. It would have been better if yeah. that's what had happened. And then I wrote, this man is Robert Pattinson at some point, because that's when I realized that I wasn't thinking of Robert Pattinson. I was thinking about Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> because this, so this is on page 100, and okay. this is when he is breaking up with Madeline, and he basically is like, you should be afraid of me because if you do anything, I could just ruin your dad's life and I'm going to take all of your money and you're never going to have anything in your life. And I'm just like. He okay. also insinuates that she's a prostitute and she's like, I'm not a prostitute. And he goes, that's where you're wrong. We're all prostitutes in our own ways. Ugh, yes. We live in a that society. Was... God. <laughs> That was so, so cringe. <laughs> yeah. He was giving serious Joker energy. Um, okay. Then uh, at this same event where he breaks up with Madeline, um, Ava's ex-boyfriend Liam shows up and he starts calling her names and like being very aggressive towards her being very controlling which is ironically what she likes about alex but what she doesn't like about liam Wait. and alex like fights him and like beats him to a bloody mess a bloody pulp and then after he's done he ruins his career and which by the way like liam does deserve it because he was trying to like assault ava yeah but in terms of the actual scene itself, it first of all, once again, exemplified that Alex can get away with anything. He doesn't get in any trouble for literally almost killing Liam. How does he just get away with that? Well, in, I thought we lived in, in a book, society. Later in the book, he when the everything goes to hell and he kills his uncle, right? He's saying how, like, all the people who showed up were on his payroll. Like, all the people who were even interviewing there, that's why they didn't arrest him, is because they were all, like, yeah. his fake police off. Well, they're real. I think they were real. They were just on his payroll. So I'm, I'm thinking that's probably what was going on there as well. He's literally, like, a mafia boss. But he's yeah. just a businessman. Yeah. So, um, I have lots of thoughts on that, but we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I wrote, uh, okay, Bruce Wayne, because that's when I realized that that's who I've been imagining 
I'm vengeance. Yeah, he... <laughs> Wait, I think he says vengeance. I think that's why... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. I'm gonna read it in a Batman voice. Okay. <clears throat> Despite my words, my <laughs> chest pinched. <laughs> Okay, let me read this. Let me read this. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Stop! I can't keep it so easy. You can't. Despite my words, my chest pinched because my uncle was right. I should feel excited. Vengeance was so close, I could taste it. But instead of sweet little relief, it coated my tongue with bitterness and turned my stomach sour. What came after vengeance? All right. So uh, if anyone wants to <laughs> voice cast Maddie as a voice actor, I'll be her agent from now on. You can. Yeah, well, yeah I can do Batman. Me. Vengeance. <laughs> my parents. Where's Rachel? Oh, my God. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> That's Alec. Oh <laughs> so, okay, my next scene is on 129, and this is when Madeline approaches Ava somewhere. Oh, at a party, mm -hmm. I think. And she, Madeline just starts talking about Alex's interests, like, in bed with Ava, and, like, kind of like a, I bet you don't like that. And I was just like, wow. First of all, yeah. Who says stuff like that? Who just goes up to their, like, ex's new partner and just starts talking about stuff like that and being like, I bet you can't keep up. Uh, vile, nasty women who aren't real. Yeah. yeah. I don't think, I hope real women don't do that. Not any that I know. That would be really disturbing if they did. Um, okay, next, 146. Let's see. This is, a. Uh... Okay, this is a part of the book where, wait, yeah, okay, I wrote, we get it, Alex, you're rich, because there was, like, so many instances when it's from his perspective, where he's just talking about how, like, he has so much money, and he's so rich, and it's just like, okay, dude, we get it, like, you're rich. That was something that I really hated about this book, because, like, not to go back to things we never got over, but Knox is also rich, Fun trip down memory lane there. Yeah. Yeah, but he's, he's also humble about it. Exactly. And this guy is just like, I'm rich. <laughs> Did we? Okay. We skipped over the part where she got pushed in the pool. Oh, right, we, right. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Madeline pushes her in the pool. and She's afraid of water. Alex knows this. But he comes and, like... Ava's already gone at this point. Like, she's been taken care of. She's fine. She fell in the pool. Someone pulled her out. They took her home. He grabs Madeline by the neck. Like, why are you... Ladies. Why are you rooting for this man? It's not... Like, it's genuinely not okay to put your hands on a woman in that context. In almost any context. Like... Ex Example, I, a character that I used to love was Damon Targaryen. I loved his relationship with Rhaenyra. The second he put his hands around her throat, done. Nope. I mean, he also killed his first wife. He's yeah, not a good but, man. Yeah, but the but thing he is, have is, put his hands was, on her. Yeah, well, he had been like yearning for Rhaenyra this whole time. He wants okay, side note. He wants the crown. He didn't want her. Yeah. He wanted to get as close as possible. Anyways. For you, House of the Dragon <laughs> creator. <laughs> um, yeah. So he, yeah, he puts his hands on Madeline, and then if, if that isn't enough, after he does that, he then proceeds to ruin Madeline's father's career, putting him in prison and ruining her life. All for pushing Ava in the pool. And I don't know what kind of pool you're imagining, but I'm picturing, like, a four-foot deep pool. 
like something small it's like lit up that blue color there's like a seat like there's like a a word like a an overhang and you can like see all of washington dc underneath okay didn't necessarily visualize the pool but i don't picture it being like it's obviously not like an olympic freaking pool it's not a house there's tons of people there so it's not like she would have drowned or anything i don't know this is a weird situation if you're an adult woman don't push another woman into a pool maybe unless a thought it's it, unless it's the fourth of july and your sister is standing next to the pool and you just happen to see her like kind of being like, on the edge then it's acceptable to push her in the pool it's actually it's, mandatory in that circumstance yeah yeah um last last summer i was having a fourth of july party and my sister was here and uh, my brother was here as well and Gwen is is she's standing on the edge of the pool and we'd already all been swimming and everything and she's standing there and I just push her in but she grabs my arm and pulls me in with her oh and we come back up for air and she's like haha that was so funny good thing I didn't have my phone in my pocket and I look down oh, yeah. and her phone is just at the bottom of the pool and so I swim down and I'm like Gwen it was in your pocket and she goes oh my gosh but it's an iPhone so it's water resistant so it was fine but don't ever push me in a pool. You're going to destroy my multi-thousand okay. dollar insulin pump. <laughs> well, just don't wear it. Oh, okay. Yeah, just like okay. don't have diabetes, Courtney. It's Cured. not that hard. Cured. Yeah, you're okay. welcome. Moving on. <laughs> We've been sidetracked okay, a so, lot. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Okay, <laughs> so the next, th anything to not talk about this book. Um. So the next scene is on 140. Eight, and this is when Ava is not responding to Alex. Of course, he shows up at her place of work, which is an art gallery. He brings her a phone because he's like, you're not texting me back. And she's like, I don't need a phone. I have one. My, I already have one. And he's like, okay, um, then like, do you get like a sales commission from your stuff here? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, okay, I'm going to buy a piece from this, from this gallery. And I'm going to buy the most like, expensive one. And she was, like, trying to tell him, like, oh, it's so expensive. And the guy is, like, that works there with Ava is, like, oh, no, ring him up for it. Ring him up for it. He wants it. And then she goes, Alex, this piece costs four forty thousand dollars $40,000. And he, um, he goes, really? Shit? And she goes, I'm sure we can. And he goes, I thought it was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I hate wow. him. Humble flex, dude. Wow. Is this, okay, yeah. is this when he gets her the phone, or is it during the photo shoot? No, it's during this one he okay. gets her a phone. I He's might mad have at her at the photo shoot. Earlier. It's okay. Um, he gets upset with her because she's still not responding during that, but this is, like, after they, like, kind of broke up a little bit, so it was, like, a, yeah. a lover's quarrel, yeah. if you will. Yeah. So, ugh. Um, this is when they also make plans to go to a hotel to do swim lessons, which we already not all that happen happens. There. Yeah. Um, in fa so 155 is like the scene like right before they like go up. And this is what he says. You're about to find out what happens when you invite yourself into the lion's den. I wrote that's so cringe. Ugh. The lion's den. Yeah. Um, and then they, you know, uh, do things. They do the um, thing. I wrote, I hate this because I really hated it. There's a line in here and I'm not going to read it because it is a very graphic, but it's, on, Courtney, if you want to see what line I'm talking about. Yes. It's on page 158. One, five, and it eight. is um, that main paragraph in the middle of the page if you want to read it it's specifically the last thing that he says in that line or in that section and that's when i realized that i hated this book and i hated alex whoa yeah also for men if you're reading along with us that not sexy take notes no document it um not Nine. not only is it not but that came off as very uh essay to me mm. 
Yeah. Because it's like, I'm not even going to ask you for your permission to do this. I'm just going to do this to you. Also, as like a punishment. Yeah. It should never be a punishment. Always a pleasure. No. Come on, guys. So, after that scene happens, it switches to Ava's perspective. <laughs> and, uh, I, so, okay, this is what she says. Um... Even at his col- coldest, sorry, even at his coldest, Alex has always treated me with respect outside the bedroom. I wrote, Ava, you are delusional. <laughs> <laughs> if you think Certainly that this not. is respect, he did not know. There's no respect for you. No. Ugh. Lots of um, degradation, okay. though. That was plenty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He gets mad at her because. Like, she tried to do things with him at, like, a friend's house. And he was like, stop. You think I'm going to do this at a friend's house? Blah, 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 blah. And then on page 183, they do it in public. And it's, like, fine. Um, He does this thing that made me actually – I wrote this is horrifyingly disgusting because I was so disturbed by it. Um, Courtney, once again, um, let's see. It is page 183. Uh, towards, like, the middle. It's, like, right after that longer paragraph. Got it. Gross. Yeah. If a man did that to me, uh, I would leave immediately. And yeah. Never speak to him again. Nope. Um, and then uh, the fact that she, like, describes it. Nope. Disgusting. Personally, I do not think that would be enjoyable. <clears throat> no. Um, okay, this is when I actually have some criticisms of the plot, because this is when I start to get a little confused. Okay. Page 186. It is from Ava's perspective. She is inviting... Okay, so page 187, she's invited Alex to spend Thanksgiving with her and her dad, like they do every year. And she talks about how she's worried that her dad doesn't like him. And I'm like, he's been spending Thanksgiving with your family... For eight years. If your dad didn't like him, he would have just had him leave. Yeah. Um, so that made no sense. Uh, this is when more things start to not make any sense. Um, between page 187 and page 207, which is, what, 30 pages? Mm-hmm. Or, no, it's 20 pages, actually. Um, in between this this section we find out that ava's dad is in the mafia ava's dad tried to kill her and blamed her mom ava is not his biological child and that he hates ava because she reminds him of her mom we also find out that um for some reason like uh uh he was suspected of well, no, actually, it's not even mentioned in here that he was suspected of being the person who killed Alex's family. Which, by the way, he's a dead family, which is why he is the way he is. So, supposed Amongst other reasons. Yeah. So, in between this section, this is when... Oh, yeah, no, he does mention that his par- that he thinks that Michael Chen, who is her dad... Uh, oh, no, 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 he does not. So that's what happens during that section. He like figures out like they like figure out all this stuff in twenty pages, and then his and then her dad like does like the whole supervillain thing where he sits there and he like just blatantly admits to every little detail that he possibly can about what he did to Ava as a child, which is like he like neglected her and was like awful to her because he hated her and hated her mom and tried to kill her and all these sort of things. And it's just like, I wrote, what is this? Is he a supervillain in a children's movie? Why do they always give their plans like this? Because, of course, then Alex is like, I've been recording this the entire time. The FBI? They're outside. Yeah. Yeah. And your son, right here, listening to the whole thing. They had to hold him back. Yeah. And it was just like, that was a lot to happen in 20 pages. Also, like, what the hell? And that's not even the end of all the crazy shit that happens. Pardon me. No. All the crazy stuff that happens. It's just like, I don't... 
there was never any insinuation that like her dad did anything suspicious ever and like Mm -mm. it was just like super out of the blue just be like oh by the way i'm in the i'm in the chinese mafia very random incredibly all right yeah okay so then on page 239 this is when um Alex says that the man responsible for my family's death wasn't Michael Chen, Ava's father. It was um, Ivan Volkov, my uncle. Couple of things that are odd here. First of all, was it ever alluded to at any point in the book prior to this that he, that Michael Chen was, even after we find out what happens with Ava, was the person that he suspected being... I don't think so, and I just don't know if, like, we both both missed that or what, or if that was supposed to be, like, a twist, like, a giveaway right there, a huge plot point, but it just felt like it was something that had forgotten to be stated. Either way, even if it was mentioned, clearly it wasn't in prominent enough of a way that ma- both Maddie and I can remember, so that was weird. Um, but I'm like, how many, like no offense, ill-fitted plot twists are we gonna have here? Like, it was her dad the whole time. Similar plot twist. It was his uncle the whole time. I'm like, pick... Here's the problem. The plot jumped around all over the place, right? So we have Operation Emotion at first, that one dies out. Then it's about her dad, that one dies out. Then it's about his uncle, and that's like the finishing out conflict. But I'm like, where are we going with this? Because we could have picked any one of those routes and written a story but this is just a dumpster fire of weird traumatic turns and twists and not in a good way yeah i agree uh after that we have the whole scene where this is once again only okay it starts on page uh 241 and it goes okay. until page 258 that is um what happens in between this time which is how many pages is this 18 pages something like that 17 pages alex confronts his uncle he uh <laughs> bridget and Reese. Um, no, Bridget and Ava mm-hmm. get kidnapped with Reese. Um, uh, Alex finds out where they are, goes there, confronts his uncle. His uncle admits to everything. Alex then frees the girls and Reese and then kills his uncle and then kills his uncle's bodyguard. Yeah, just in like 17 a pages. Mini murder spree. Yeah. Yay. And. <laughs> Woo! Um, and he it's a lot to happen in a couple of days and um, during this time <clears throat> it's just like he oh he also lies to his uncle being like I don't care about Ava I never cared about her I was only pretending until I found out you were the person who actually killed because he also admits that the only reason why he became friends with josh in the first place was so that he could kill his dad one day which is just like dumb so dumb. um it felt like you know what i felt like happened i felt like maybe um she had written like a really long book mm. and the publisher was like you have to cut it back it has to be shorter than this the other ones are like way thicker though I don't know. Well, this is her first one. That's so, like, true. I don't know. I think she's going for, like, a betrayal element there between Alex and um, Ava. Ava, but, like, yeah, it was just odd. It was odd. Um, and then, after all that happens, she's like, was any of this real? And he's like, no. And then, of course, they're apart for a while, and they're miserable. I'm like, why couldn't we have just ended the book on a note where it's like, after all this happens, this traumatic event, they come together. 
like this whole like back and forth for the last hundred pages or whatever is just not necessary. Not necessary. Yeah. Um. So. <clears throat> um. Okay. She, this is on 260, she says, my eyes strayed, to- this is after all the stuff just happened, um, my eyes strayed towards Alex, who looked remar- remarkably composed for someone who had shot his uncle, killed our kidnapper, and almost died himself. And I wrote, he did not almost die, you dumbass. Ava is a stupid ass. Like, she is so <laughs> dumb. And that is the conclusion I came to. And that is that Ava is dumb. And she likes toxic men. Yep. Uh, okay. Then, like Courtney said, they break up for a while. Um, she decides she's going to go to uh, this like photography fellowship that is in London. She was originally going to go to New York, and they were going to move to New York together. But now they're going to go to London. Or she's going to go to London. And um, he finds out about it. Here's he my finds thing, out. too. They've been apart for, like, months, right? And he hasn't approached her, hasn't tried to talk to her. He finds out that she's moving across the world. She's moving to London. And he then he's like, oh, I can't let her leave. Because he can't keep an eye on her there. Weird and possessive. And also, but like, he, why is that the catalyst for you getting back together? Yeah, so he actually does keep an eye on her because he sends his little spies to keep an eye on her, even when they're broken up. And it's weird and it's gross. It's very, it's possessive. Like she's an um, object. Yeah, that belongs. So to then him. It's weird. she she goes she goes to London. She says that she she loves the posh accents. <laughs> um, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Um. And yeah, and then he, she's like, "Wait, you had me followed," and he's like, "It's for your own protection." Because he shows up in London, and then instead of taking her, saying that she does not want to be with him, he sits there and he's like, "You know what? I think I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, um, friends, and uh, I'm gonna stay here, and I'm gonna win you back, and no matter how long it takes, I'm gonna win you back." And instead of just being like all cute, you know, like sending her flowers or whatever, he's like just crazy like he's he's sitting outside her house waiting for her he's walking her to places all the time and just like she doesn't want to be with you dude like she would have been better off without you um but she of course like you know is like whatever um this is when uh i gave this is these are my red flags of alex um he gaslights he love bombs he stalks and he murders uh and he's rich so (laughs) Not that he let you forget that, though. Ugh. Bad man. Bad man! Yeah. Then, um, then one year later, so this is going on for a year. Like, he's trying to win her back for a year in London. The whole time she's gone. Super creepy. And she's like, oh, we're, like, good friends now. Like, it's fine. (sighs) Um, she has an art gallery, and of course I wrote, let me guess, he's gonna buy the whole thing because he's so rich and he can just buy whatever he wants, which is exactly what he does. Which, by he the buys way, all of her. I would be upset about, because, like, as- It's- Yes! As an artist who's trying to establish a career, if your partner buys all of your pieces of work, how are you going to create a sustainable, like, business and reputation for yourself? You can't! Exactly. It makes it's you so, look, like... It makes you look like you're not talented. Like, they're just buying it to yep. support you, not be, be, not because it's, like, art that they like. And it, it's making yes. it impossible for other people to consume your work. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Big yeah. turn off for me. Personally. Um. So then, we have, uh... So, then, he start singing yeah he does karaoke so out of character i know that was so like, okay there's a, there's a couple of things that really bothered me about this so he starts he's at this art gallery for her and he just starts singing and he's apparently got this beautiful voice and of course first of all 
He's stealing her moment. This is her art gallery. And instead of being like, wow, Ava, I'm so proud of all the work you've done. And I've been trying so hard to win you back. And I'm just going to sit here and be quiet and support you from a distance. He has his whole, like, ensemble done where he sings. And everybody pays attention to him and not her art. Which they can't even buy because he already bought it all. Then, he has the freaking audacity to say... Because he, he disappears after that. He, like, runs away. It's your big night. I didn't want to take that away from you. I wrote, liar! You <laughs> liar! You're lying! You did want to take that away from her because you don't want anybody to look at her or to anybody have any opinions of her. Oh, it made me so... It made me so mad. Oh, I'm turning That's into scary. Alex. <laughs> I'm turning into everything. <laughs> I'm turning into everything I never wanted to be, Courtney. Ugh. I'm super rich. And You're I want super- vengeance. You never wanted to be super rich? I'm vengeance, Courtney. Courtney. <laughs> let me, let me, let me emotionally abuse you, Courtney. This is my life, everyone. <laughs> You're um, gonna okay. This, but it's getting Graham right now. Oh, I know. It's because you can't associate. It's like Batman is the only thing that you can associate with him. That's my brother, by the way. Um, then you know they like get back together. Never learn. They, like get back together, and then she said, "This is how the book ends." Well, the book, and then there's the epilogue. Um, she says, "And you know what, Alex and I, we fit perfectly." No, you do not. Go to therapy. That's all folks. Go to therapy. <laughs> um, change your identity and leave. Go somewhere else. Yeah. Then we got the epilogue. Uh, oh, this is when he talks about how he had plenty of black- blackmail on Madeline's father, embezzling, money laundering, deals of unsavory characters. And I said, just Alex putting dads in prison again because he had already put Ava's dad in prison. Her not real dad. Yeah. <gasps> then dad. finally... Last but not least, my last note is there is one, there's another part of this um, scene. It's it's the very last line of 138 on to 139, if you want to read it. Um, 138? I wrote, dude, what? Sorry, 338 and okay. 339. I literally wrote, dude, okay. what the fuck? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then that's pretty much how it ends, so... Then she wrote, thank you for reading Twisted Love. If you enjoyed this book, I'd be grateful if you can leave a review on the platforms of your choice. I'm leaving a review. Here we are. I hate it. I hate it. So that was Twisted Love by Anna Anna or Anna Wong. We're two for two now. Two goodies, two baddies. And not the good kind. No, not just the bad kind. No, not that kind of baddies. It's cringy. Cringy and bad. I hate this book. It's awful. I don't know what I'm going to do with it because I don't want to keep it. Um, so, who knows what I'll do with it. Maybe we'll burn it. Maddie and I did dabble in witchcraft in college. Shh, don't tell my boyfriend that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I belong to what's first, Madison. Come on. <laughs> yeah. They're going to burn you at the stake, Courtney. I hope you're ready. That's definitely um, how Southern Baptists work. It actually is. It's kind of <laughs> frightening. Um, so next week, we are going to be reading. Next week's actually an exciting week because, first of all, Courtney and I will be together in person. Oh, my God. Oh, let's go. We're going to Arizona for a wedding, and we thought that it would be fun to read a little wedding-themed romance. So we're going to be reading... The Wedding Crasher by Mia Sosa. And I am excited. I already can tell I'm probably going to like this book better because the cover is much, much nicer. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. Pretty in pink. I have not copped it yet because Maddie just got it like, what, yesterday? Yesterday. I'm going to, I'm taking a BNN trip tomorrow with my sister. Going to cop some new, some new stuff. 
Yeah, we also, we may have a guest next week. It depends on whether or not my sister actually reads the book, because if she reads the book, <laughs> we'll be being joined by my 16-year-old sister. If she does not read the book, we will not be joined by my 16-year-old sister. Um, either way, I'm excited to read this book. I think that this will hopefully be a little bit better than Twisted Love. <sighs> Any final thoughts that you have about Twisted Love? Um... No, uh, aside from the fact that it was disappointing in light of all the hype, um, I'm concerned for a lot of you. There are a lot better romance novels, and, like, I get it if you're into darker themes. This one is just, like, a lot. Personally, as I've said before, I love, like, rom com stuff. I love Tessa Bailey books. Like, I love really happy, feel-good. And there can be trauma. Like, there was trauma and things you never got over. It was still phenomenal very wholesome and like it was normal how people dealt with their issues in that book this one toxic crazy everyone in this book needs therapy uh and yeah i mean inventions i just listen reading takes time it even for short ish books and so I am always disappointed when I feel like my time has not been spent wisely, especially with how busy I am. So that was a little disappointing. But I, we wouldn't recommend this book. If you want to read it, go ahead. If you already have and you like it, more power. Feel to free you. to leave in the comments how we're the worst. Yeah. <laughs> viewers of all time and how we're wrong. Uh, Yeah. So that concludes this week's episode. Um, in terms of what I'm reading for funsies outside of this, I am currently uh, a little over a, like three-fourths of the way done with Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It is a book about, you know, family and family trauma and generational trauma and fake celebrities and I'm ex it's pretty good. I've been really enjoying it. We are planning on reading Daisy Jones and the Six, which is also by the same author, in a couple of weeks. And that will be a fun read, I think. Because this is mm -hmm. this is actually really fun. It's not a romance. It, there's romance in it, but it's not a romance. Okay. So it's a little, it's just like fiction. And it's, it's pretty good. Uh, are you reading anything for funsies? Yes, I am still on the Runaway Groomsman. Pretty good book. It's made me laugh a lot. Uh... I'm like halfway through it and the love interests haven't connected yet so i'm like come on give it to me um but so far it's a pretty good rom-com -y, feel good romance and that's my bread and butter so yeah mm -hmm. all right well that concludes this week's episode if you are still watching thank you so much for still watching um if you have suggestions for books for us to read, leave them down in the comments below. If you are listening to the audio version of this podcast, thank you. Please leave a rating on your platform of choice. It helps so much if you're looking for us on social media. We have an Instagram and a TikTok. Both of them are the Woody Banter Book Club. And that is all. So, see you next week. See you next week. Uh, and happy reading. <laughs>